Right, Andre, so here's my really stupid looking scene. It's literally a bowl of all the models being surrounded by uh, aliens. Now, as you see, there is uh, implemented fog, implemented uh, lighting, or multiple lighting, as in each one of those UFOs has a light connected to it. And there is also a direct light. So if I move away, it'll follow with the camera, or not follow, but it'll be along since fog is implemented. There's a textured, there's a textured map, there's a, a terrain with proper height map, as in you could fucking see all these mountains and shit, and the UVs are properly reflecting back towards the camera and such. Um, there is a moving object to show reflecting light, and each of these objects, I guess, you could also count since the light moves around it. There's the six-sided repeating um, box. There are repeating texture boxes. If you squint really hard, I just realized I set the light color to light, like gray-white or off-white or whatever the hell it's called. But there's a the, the repeating texture pyramid there, and then there's several unit spheres. There's the uh, preloaded tree that's been floating around everywhere, and there is a multi-meshed um, chest. So inside there's coins that have a separate mesh, and then the box itself is using a uh, wood injection. And then, of course, my favorite part, the actual bowl itself. It's bowls of pre-models. Shit is great. Um... I also have a sky map. The sky map itself is not perfect, only because I'm not a master artist to clean up the edges, but nonetheless, it is UV'd more or less correctly. Now, going into the actual code for it, you could go and I will show you the pre models. So, close this, close this, and this. So, shaders. So, from here in the model folder, I have the terrain models, which are here and here, and uh, essentially it's just a port over from when we did the terrain homework in assignments, I believe six, no, no, assignment five, my bad. We're back in assignment five, and um, essentially I used this uh, model class to create a graphic object to contain it, so I've split up my um, filters in the base class, new boys, which you'll probably hate, which is my skybox and terrain, and old boys. So within terrain, I have both a regular graphic object, not graphic, um, gra yeah, graphic object terrain and a graphic object terrain light. That was meant for testing since I was having some issues with uh, lighting a little bit earlier. And essentially what they are is a standard um, terrain light or um, regular terrain, or not terrain, texture light or regular t texture um, graphic object, just instead of using the P model pointer to a, a model from the base class, it's taking in a terrain model pointer. Um, past that, there's also the skybox. Now with the skybox, I couldn't decide whether to leave all of the, uh, I guess, construction code within the constructor or put it into its own pre-made model class within the, the model functions and all that fun stuff. So I chose to go the route of producing it all within the constructor. Now within the actual constructor itself, um, to fix some of the alignment errors, I made these extraneously long uh, third and two-third floats, essentially, called motherfucking toolfuck. And replacing those um, helped with the alignment on the top basis to the point where um, I, I realized it's more so the texture rather than my actual UVs, since uh, there's like a very slight line on the edge. Now I know one fix would be to be like, collecting from inside the actual texture, but I'm no artist, not texture, but inside the actual skybox mapping, but again, I'm not an artist. We'll have to deal with that. But yeah, um, this was all ported over from, 
I believe, assignment 5, part 1. There's a destructor for it. There's a set role function, and then the render just calls the set texture to render for the actual texture, sends the world to the sh for the shader, and then the actual render call for the model itself. And you, we call delete sky here since we're creating a new model there. Um, then past that, I guess going back into the train class, I, I should show you. Uh, Alright, yeah, so don't mind that, whatever, fuck it. Um, in the terrain class I show you that um, the terrain light is actually taking in the terrain model but acting extremely similar to the texture lights in that. It just sets it to a pointer and then calls it during the render to also grab the context of the shaders that you placed in. And mm, past that, we could go into the shader classes that were edited so what i mean by that is we had to change things like texture light to have multiple lights so actually it'd be easier to go to the actual shader classes so let's say one second so within texture light itself we could see one second, that well what it, what was physically added was two new set parameters such that we could change each individual light within the actual GX app and within the actual um, trucks within the private section there are um, new spotlights so there's spotlight um, I guess you could call it base or zero spotlight two and spotlight three each having the normal um, structures of a normal spotlights so the long ADS light just for position, attenuation, direction, and uh, all that fun stuff. But the uh, major change that had to be done was within the data light parameters because it needed to include two more um, spotlights of those types. And then on top of that, uh, I also added fog. So that needed a new fog um, struct as well as a fog buffer. And also the send fog details so that it could allow the user to send in um, the starting range and or the, the start point and the distance to um, begin the fog. Now um, you're saying to overload them with default values that essentially uh, don't render fog at all because they're outside of the view flush from so setting it to 15,000 for start and range does such a job that user will never see it if they don't put in their own values and within the actual shader texture cvp um, what was added was the fog buffer itself zeroing out the light data so that it includes the two new spotlights and then for releasing and deleting the new buffer for fog um, the set functions again are extremely similar to the normal set point or set Spotlight function, except it's sending it to a different um, data group of Spotlight Data 2 and Spotlight Data 3. And then sending the light parameters, we had to add um, the Spotlight Data 2 connecting to the Spotlight 2, 3, 3, as such. And then for fog details, it's just sending the start range and color into the actual buffer for the HL SL file to deal with. Now, Past that, we also had to make another constant buffer on um, part three, not part three, but on buffer three for the, um, the vectors and the pixels. Now, within the actual um, HLSL file, we could see that uh, <clears throat> the actual HLSL file was changed was here within light parameters in the first buffer to have the new spotlights and then the actual third buffer for the fog while also including the struct for all the fog data and then past that the actual computation for spotlight also changed to include the new buffer not buffers the new um, 
spotlight data. So their respective ambient and diffuse to the total ambient and diffuse of um, the HLSL. So be these two here. And then here is the fog data that we created back in homework, I want to say nine or eight, whatever the last one was, essentially for um, computating and then lerping uh, the fog data, as we've seen in the scene. Now, past this, there comes the graphic objects themselves. So you've already seen the new boys that I've created, but the old boys are now inclusive to um, multi-meshing, which we've seen being used once. So within multi-meshing, it's essentially splitting up the mesh into an array and assigning a uh, texture or color to said mesh through iterating through the array or through a setting function. So um, the major changes here was, of course, actually setting up the arrays themselves and cleaning them up, a new function to set a specific enumeration of the mesh to a specific color, same with, um, and then using the normal set color just fills the whole array with uh, that specific color that's passed in. And then the, the render itself calls for the bind vertex index buffers to grab the context of um, instead of the very simple setting to world and then calling render, it goes through pretty much all of them to connect the context to the specific shader correctly and then sending the world and specific mesh color of that mesh to the shader. Very similar with, um, with color light, except we have new arrays of the Other meshes, my words are deceiving me. Yeah. Again, very similar like the others, only changes a new set material function to take in the mesh number to apply to that specific mesh of the model. Um, with texture, it's the same, but instead of colors, it uses textures, and to start it out, you need it up extra double pointer such that when initializing the texture double pointer can create an array of texture pointers so that it could go through and set textures accordingly and then render accordingly. Uh, same with light except it has more vectors, not vectors, more vector arrays of the ambient diffuse spec. Um, what else is there? So, there was slight changes with the model to, uh, I guess, to allow for mesh separating. So, first off is actually not, not that my bad. It's more so the major changes were for loading in from files so that we could load in custom, um, what do they call it? custom models ourselves. And uh, side note that FBX converter is not fun to use, nor is using uh, TGA converters because half the textures I've tried to use are horrendous and just straight up don't work. Um, but yeah, so there is the regular create model by index and vertex and all that fun shenanigans using the actual model's name to do that and then using a pre-made model name. And within the premades, we have the unit sphere pyramid repeated texture, regular pyramid unit box six face texture, which I believe I showed you as that one face box, and then repeated texture with the normal boxes that were there, and the unit box is just something to use with color. Now the actual model delete um, takes care of all the uh, triangle list and standard vertices, and then also releases the buffers which should be normal since we worked with this a long while back. And here, this is a private method that was provided to us to load from load data from a file. Uh, you've probably seen this because I'm really sure you and Ed probably wrote this. Um, past that, there's the get meshes count, which returns the meshes from 
the actual uh, model 